Hi and welcome to Her Business, where we interview inspiring businesswomen and entrepreneurs. I'm Susie Daphnis of the Australian Business Women's Network. My guest today is world champion surfer Lane Beachley. Lane started the Aim for the Stars Foundation in 2003 to inspire girls and women across Australia to dream and achieve. In this interview, we talk about goals, achievement, and never giving up. Enjoy this interview with Lane Beachley. Lane, hi, welcome. Thank you, Susie. It's great to be with you. Tell us a little bit about why you started Aim for the Stars and what its main goal is. I established the Aim for the Stars Foundation back in 2003 and it was basically um, through the luxury of hindsight. I had just secured my sixth consecutive world title and I reflected back on my career and thought about all the challenges I had, especially when it came to finances and the amount of times I wanted to quit and walk away from the sport. And then when I you know, got to the point where I'd secured six world titles, I looked back and went, wow, imagine all this I would have missed out on had I chosen to walk away because I didn't have the financial means to achieve my goal. And fortunately throughout my career there were individuals along the way that did believe in me more than I believed in myself and provided me with that financial support. So the moral of the foundation (laughs) is to dare to dream, pursue your passion, aspire to achieve. It's about inspiring and mentoring and motivating women across Australia of all endeavours to pursue their dreams and not to give up. Oh, well, that sounds amazing. <laughs> and um, I'm going to ask you in a moment about a couple of examples of women who, who have been beneficiaries of um, your program. But I yes. just want to talk about goals and dreams very quickly because um, I wanted to know, have you always set goals and had good strategies for achieving them? I have predominantly had good strategies but I have definitely always set goals. And uh, the, my first goal that I re- recall setting was when I was – six years old and, and uh, I decided then and there that I I wanted to um, – actually, I, I set several goals when I was six that I wanted <laughs> to play sport and I wanted to be a stockbroker and I wanted to do all sorts of amazing things. It's incredible the um, – the, the headspace you're in when you're, when you're a kid because anything is possible. Then at eight years old it was when my dad told me I was adopted and that had a profound impact on my life. It made me feel like I didn't belong anywhere even though I was loving, you know, in a very loving family. So I established the goal to become a world champion and by the time I was 15 that sport had become surfing and from then on I just never looked back. I always had to become a world champion in surfing. Mm, and those goals were obviously – created a direction um, yes. to pursue that passion. What sort of effect do you feel having something that we're really passionate about in our lives? What sort of effect do you feel that has? Well, it has a really important effect. It's profound actually. I think when I look back on my adolescence and my childhood and, and the the processes that I went through to become a world champion and now maintain that success out of the water, I'd have to say it was established through a core self definition, a self-belief and I identified myself as a world champion before I became one <laughs> and then and then I surrounded myself with a team of people that could help me and so through my belief, my emotions, my, my thoughts and my actions, I was able to then create the result that I desperately desired which was to become a world champion but most of us go through life working in the opposite way. We allow our beliefs and our thoughts and our actions to then to define who we are. But it's really important that you take the time to define yourself first and then you can create positive actions and positive outcomes that you really truly want. We have a lot of women um, that we interview through the network and I've not ever heard someone approach it from that perspective. Um, Mm. So thank you for that. Um, One of the grants... um, ways that uh, your grants can be used has been for the pursuit of business goals and um, those grants are valued at around three thousand dollars I understand but please correct me Um, how would winning a business grant for example help a young woman or not even a young woman because these grants are for anyone over 16 is that right yes they are and it helps these girls maintain a focused purpose and discipline on their careers and their chosen pursuits. So the the great thing about this foundation is that we we aren't layered with expectation. These girls have the courage to ask for help. They've shown initiative and drive and passion and enthusiasm to achieve something. They've asked us for help to help them achieve it and then we provide them with the financial support to do so. If they don't go on and achieve it, Mm. that's fine too. We don't expect them to. We are also very pleased when they do. So 
I think anyone who starts a business and and you know is is relying on um, cash flow, especially mm. to keep their business moving, understands the importance of having a little bit of an injection now and then from places where you wouldn't expect it. And that's what we are. We're we're a financial and moral injection into the pursuit of success. Now you're obviously best known for your numerous sporting achievements. Where do you see yourself in the world of business? That's a very good question. I don't consider myself to be a very successful business person. Um, I have been in the world of business for several years. I established my own clothing line and where I made my greatest mistakes was first I didn't know the correct the correct questions to ask and secondly I didn't surround myself with the right people the great thing about an athletic pursuit is when you know what you want to achieve you can visualize an outcome and then you can clearly identify who you need to help you get there in business it's a little bit more convoluted it's not as clear the the landscape's always changing the goalposts are always moving and you continue to need to surround yourself with mentors and advisors and directors and it's a lot more challenging so uh, it makes it a little bit more difficult to achieve your ultimate goal when Mm. it continues to shift from my perspective, I mean, I see you as a businesswoman who you have a brand, you need to establish that brand, the brand needs to be congruent with who you are and obviously you do that and so your support of these other women speaks to yes. me of who you are. So you, I, I see your place in business perhaps a little different to how That's, you do. Well, I appreciate that because I think I've placed too much expectation or I've placed some sort of limitation or identity as to what being in business actually means and you're right I'm in business as a as a brand as an individual brand and I just like a business I've had to identify what are my core values Mm -hmm. what am I going to pursue that's meaningful to me that that creates an outcome that I that I desire that I also know can influence change and support others in the process so yeah Hmm. I need to like <laughs> for myself. Uh, since the foundation's launch, it's transformed the lives of hundreds of females. Are there one or two particular stories that you're fond of that you could share with us? The wonderful thing thing about the Aim for the Stars is we provide support for women in all endeavours, not just sport. But, of course, the sporting ones are the ones that are the closest to my heart. So back in 2004 when we had our first grant recipients, a young girl called Casey Easton applied and she wanted to pick herself up and relocate herself to Perth to pursue her hockey career. Mm-hmm. And I remember reading her application and her dream was to represent Australia at Beijing as the youngest hockey room. She fulfilled that dream and if it wasn't for first her asking wow. for support and then us being able to provide that to her, she wouldn't have been able to achieve that. My second favourite one is a young girl called Emma Henschel who was an aerial trapeze artist. She went to Montreal to compete in the World Championships and secured two gold medals from doing so. But, but what, what was so fascinating about Emma's journey is that from that event, she was then headhunted by Cirque du Soleil. And now is before- that right? Yes. Oh, how fantastic. Yeah, so never underestimate the impact you can have on someone else's life. I was reading that your dream is to continue your path to success, to remain motivated, positive and fit enough to surf until you're 80, which I I had a little giggle. I thought, of course you will. How do you measure success these days? Is it still related to your sport? I measure success through personal fulfillment. It, it, it has to be relative because, like I said, when you're an athlete, you measure success by standing on a dais and holding up a trophy and being sprayed with champagne. That doesn't happen in business. Well, not in business as I know. Yeah. So I measure success through, through doing things, celebrating little achievements along the way and doing things that are meaningful and that f- give you a sense of fulfillment and purpose and also people that take the time to give back to others and mentor others and share their experiences experiences both good and bad to uh, I guess soften the blow and and soften the journey for others. Hmm. Well tell us a little bit about um, who can apply for a grant and how do they go about it? Anybody with a dream and a passion and can express the need for this level of support can apply for a a financial grant from Aim for the Stars. All they have to do is log on to the website aimforthestars.com.au and uh, fill out the application form and send it in before November 15th and every single grant applicant is taken into consideration. Great. Lane, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Susie. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening. I trust you enjoyed this interview with Lane Beachley. Lane Beachley, Aim for the Stars Foundation, is currently taking applications and you can learn more at www.aimforthestars.com.au. Applications close 16 November 2012, but if you're listening to this podcast at another time, check details for when applications next open. Thanks for listening.